Hi everybody, this is Gat Sad for the Sad Truth. I often tell my students that it is uniquely important as they are getting their education to focus on courses that will teach them tools and knowledge that they're unlikely to pick up uh, pretty quickly uh, once they enter the uh, labor force. And so one of these uh, sets of skills that most students typically shy away from, but they shouldn't, are data analytic techniques, mathematical techniques that allow uh, people to better understand data. And of course, in marketing and in consumer behavior, there are all sorts of settings where in order to understand all sorts of uh, market realities, you have to use very sophisticated mathematical tools. Now, students will typically shy away from that because many of them will have math phobia. They feel as though uh, this is too technical for them, too difficult, too complex. But ultimately, those are the skills that are particularly important to pick up while you are uh, obtaining your uh, degrees. Uh, in any case, today I thought that I would uh, focus on one of these important techniques. In an earlier Sad Truth clip, and I'll refer back to it in my last slide, I think it was the Sad Truth 303, I talked about ways by which one might uh, elicit the importance weights of attributes. So for example, if you've got a bunch of attributes defining a car, right, the, the price of the car and the gas efficiency of the car, the safety record of the car, how would you uh, elicit the importance weights uh, of each of those attributes from consumers? And I talked about several of these techniques. The fourth method of which is called conjoint analysis, which is a truly indispensable tool uh, for folks who wish to enter a career uh, in this field. But in any case, the, the technique today I'd like to discuss is another truly important technique called cluster analysis. Some of you may have heard of this term, others may have not. Let me just kind of give you the background. So if you've taken any introductory to marketing course, one of the fundamental principles that you'll learn is that uh, you, when, you, when you wish to uh, uh, create good uh, segmentation strategy, you first have to segment the market, and then you target each of the segments. Now, inherent to that process is the idea that the consumers within a segment are likely to be very similar to one another, but then they're likely to be maximally different from those in another segment. That's the whole point of why you segment the market. So notwithstanding that most students will quickly understand what uh, that concept is, what they typically won't do next is to learn the statistical technique that is typically used to create these segments. And this is where cluster analysis comes in. Cluster analysis is a uh, set of algorithms, if you'd like, that allow us to group things that are similar with one another so that they are maximally different from those in another cluster. So there you have it. So let's take, for example, I'm trying to get to the next slide. Unable to, I'm not sure why. Oh, here we go. So the first question you might want to ask is how many clusters to use? So for example, if you're talking about uh, consumers may use your products to a different extent. Uh, some use it never, some use it very lightly, some use it very regularly, and you're trying to now decide whether there are really, uh, you know, if a few clusters of consumers that might map onto this behavioral reality, or maybe there are many different clusters. So the first question, if you look at this slide, by the way, I put here the source of where I obtained this figure. So let's say here you have a bunch of points. These are, let's say here there's an X axis and a Y axis. This might be brand loyalty, this might be product expertise, whatever the X and Y variables are. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. So here you've got all of the different points, the data points. In this case, they're not clustered yet. These are the original points. Now, in a two cluster solution, so look here, they're all the same. Here is one cluster. You see they're all marked using the same geometric shape. And then here's a second cluster. So the idea being that there's something inherently different about the consumers here from those that are here. So this, this is the original set of data points. This is a two cluster solution, or if you like two segments. In this case, you've got four clusters. 
the, the, the data distribution remains the same, right? The way that these data points are distributed in the two-dimensional space is the same, but in this case, you've got one cluster here, a second cluster here, a third cluster here, and a fourth cluster here. And now here's a sixth cluster solution. Here's cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, cluster four, cluster five, and cluster six. So one of the first decisions that you have to make when you're doing cluster analysis is how many clusters to use. In some cases, you could let the algorithm decide that for you. In other cases, you will impose, I want a three cluster solution. You also have to decide what should be your, the attributes that define the means by which you're going to be clustering these people. For example, these could be demographic variables. It's age and income. It could be uh, attitudinal measures, uh, how you feel about shopping, or it could be brand loyalty measures. So in other words, uh, you have to carefully choose on which attributes you expect to create meaningful segments. And here it's, uh, you know, whether you choose the right set of attributes or not will determine whether your segmentation exercise uh, proves fruit fruitful or not. So here we've got, as a first step, choosing which attributes to pick. And by the way, typically when we're showing these uh, cluster analyses, uh, realities, we will use two-dimensional space, of course, because it's the easiest for us to, to understand and see, but it doesn't have to be, right? It could be three-dimensional, it could be n-dimensional. In other words, you could cluster segments using multi-dimensions. All right, next. So now here, forget about for a second that here are some yellow folks, here are some red folks, here are some blue folks. This is the final cluster solution. But assume that all of these, uh, I put these, th this wasn't part of the original uh, uh, figure. So I just put these uh, attributes, brand loyalty and product expertise. I could have put some other ones. So in this case, let's suppose that what I care about is how consumers score on brand loyalty. So the higher here, the more brand loyal they are. And the more you go to the right, the greater product expertise they have. And so it appears that here we've got one cluster of yellows, another cluster of reds, and a third cluster of blues. But for a second, let's suppose that this we, we don't have this yet. In other words, they're all the same color. Well, one possible cluster solution would be this. This is one cluster. This would be a second cluster. This would be a third cluster. So this is one possible cluster solution. Here's another one. And this one, here is one cluster solution. Here is a second one. And here is a third one. Now, here is the final one that's actually the one that was picked, hence the same colored. Uh, here is one cluster making up, if you like, the yellow consumers. Here is the second cluster making up the blues. Here is the third cluster making up the reds. Well, how did the algorithm, I showed you two non-chosen clusters and then the final three cluster solution. How did the algorithm actually choose this? Well, there are different ways by which uh, one can arrive to a final cluster solution. One way, if you like, is called the centroid method. This is where what you try to do is you take the, cent the center of that cluster and you try to ensure or you, you maximize the distance between here to here to here to here, right? And you minimize the distance within this, from the center of the cluster to the outer edge of the cluster. What does that effectively mean? You wish to find that optimal solution whereby you do you achieve two things. You minimize the distance within and you maximize the distance between. What does that effectively mean? You want the consumers who are most Max to be maximally similar to one another within each segment and to be maximally dissimilar to all other consumers in other clusters. That's effectively what you're doing. So this is the type of tool that is very, very important for people to learn how to use. It's one thing to simply understand segmenting and targeting in the abstract as a concept, but then to actually get your hands dirty with data to understand what is the type of data that you need how do you 
analyze that data? How do you interpret that data? This is where it becomes really important uh, to take these types of courses, whether it be you know, you're pursuing your undergraduate de degree in business or perhaps your MBA. Uh, and of course, many of these multivariate statistical techniques are things that uh, doctoral students would also be learning as part of their uh, doctoral training. So to conclude, I've talked today about cluster analysis, but you should also check out my earlier um, Sad Truth, uh, it was indeed Sad Truth uh, 303, where I talked about conjoint analysis. It's another indispensable tool within the toolbox of uh, marketing data analytic techniques. And if in future Sad Truth clips, I'll talk about something called MDS or multidimensional scaling. This is the statistical technique that is typically used to generate what are called perceptual maps to those of you who uh, may have a, a business degree. I'll also talk about factor analysis, which is a data reduction technique. Uh, so for example, if you've taken your GMAT exam, you typically will get, this is the exam that you take to, enter, to say to do an MBA or to do a PhD in business. Uh, your final scores will be assigned, you know, a, a verbal score, a quantitative score, uh, whatever, an analytics, whatever they are. Well, the way that you generate these scores is very much what factor analysis does. It takes a bunch of variables and it reduces them to a smaller group of fundamental factors, if you'd like, without losing, hopefully, much of the data variance. Anyways, we'll talk about this in a future uh, session. And then you've got something called discriminant analysis, which is a very, very powerful technique. So suppose I've got uh, consumers who either voted for me or didn't vote for me, uh, if I'm a politician. Well, what might be some predictors that can help discriminate between you falling in group A, the ones who voted for me, or those that didn't vote for me? So again, as you can see here, uh, marketing is really made up of a bunch of fields, uh, one of which is really learning how to use statistical tools and mathematical algorithms to better understand data that is relevant for uh, marketing decision making. So there you have it, folks. I hope that you enjoyed today's, uh, I guess it's a mini MBA session, uh, and I I promise to continue to provide you uh, future sad truth clips uh, where hopefully uh, you can learn a lot of what might be learned in an MBA class, but hopefully for a lot, lot cheaper. Speaking of which, if you enjoyed this, you could at the very least share it so that more people can learn about this knowledge. And at the very least, I hope that you'll agree that given the amount of time that I spend on this, by the way, today, I had a million things to do and I ended up spending, you know, probably two, over two hours putting together this uh, clip and then now posting it. So if you, uh, if it is something that you can do, that you could afford, uh, you could give as little as $1 a month or much more, certainly a lot less expensive than $50,000 tuition in university. So I uh, look forward to hearing your comments or seeing your comments in the comments section. Thanks for your support. And I hope that you all will have a good week. Cheers.